In this video, I'm going to show you how to use OneNote for digital note taking. OneNote is an amazing app that allows you to create notebooks and fully customize them with a variety of uh, tools and functions. You can use OneNote on your desktop or laptop as well as on a tablet if you have access to one. If you don't already have OneNote, you can download it for free at the Ontario Tech software portal. You can access this at software.ontariotechu.ca. Follow the instructions to download and install OneNote, and once you do, you can just open it and you'll see your own personal notebook. If you want to create additional notebooks, you can just right-click the screen and go to New Notebook, and then you'll be able to add the title of the notebook as well as choose your theme or colors. For this demo, I've created two notebooks, one for bio and one for chemistry. I like to have a separate notebook for each course or um, class, and then I like to split up my notebooks into different section groups. Each section group belongs to a different chapter. So for biology, I've just included three of the chapters so far. So chapter one, molecules of life, chapter two, gene expression, and chapter three, organizing principles. So to get a better look of this, I'm just gonna go to chapter one, which is molecules of life. And as you can see, the three um, sections under this chapter are proteins, nucleic acids, and carbohydrates. If I wanted to add one of these uh, section groups, I would just right-click under the notebook and click New Section Group. So this gives you the subheading, and then you can add as many um, extra tabs or sections as you would like. If you don't like the subheadings and you just want the tabs themselves, you can just right-click and go to New Section, and that'll give you um, the sections itself. But I just prefer to have the subheadings because I think it's a lot easier and uh, a lot more organized. So now I'm going to minimize this menu here and I'm just going to walk you through um, some of the things I like to do as well as some of the basic features that um, OneNote offers. So here I'm showing you my uh, notes for the proteins section. So as you can see I start off by including a little list of the topics that I need to cover. So I do this as a to-do list because I find it a lot easier to work with and I can simply check the boxes once I am done. In order to actually add the content, you're going to want to go to the Draw tab here at the top. And there is different ways to add content to OneNote. So the basic one is to type. This is already selected. And all you have to do is just click anywhere on the screen and then just type your content. I'm going to add a little subtitle that says amino acids. I'm going to make this a little bigger and then I'm going to bold it and highlight it. And then I can put this tag anywhere I want. I'm going to put it as a little title for this figure here, which is the structure of amino acids. I also use the type function um, to type most of the content that you see here. Now, in addition to this, you can also use the annotate um, annotation tool um, if you have access to a tablet or a touchscreen laptop. So you can just use your stylus for this. Um, you can select the pen that you like as well as the color and thickness of both the pens and the highlighters. I use this function on my tablet to draw this general structure of amino acids that you see here. Now if you don't have access to a tablet though, don't worry. You, there's still ways for you to add your drawn contents. One way to do this is to draw your structure or whatever it is that you want to add onto um, a piece of paper, and then you can simply scan it or take a picture of it, and then you can go to the Insert tab at the top, click Picture, and then you can just upload it. If you don't want to do that, you can also just find uh, pictures online, like I've done here with this um, Structure of Amino Acids figure that you see on the right. You can save it on your computer and then also go to insert picture and then you can just have any picture and as you can see here with the pictures that you do include you're able to fully type on top of them or you can highlight any structures or any part of it that you like so uh, you're still able to fully annotate with them even if you don't have a stylus in addition to this if we go back to the insert tab you're able to also take a screenshot. So if you have, let's say, lecture notes or um, any online modules that you want to take a screenshot of, you can do that directly with OneNote using the screen clipping option. And that way you're, you'll be able to just directly save any um, screenshots onto your um, notebook. 
So next I'm going to show you um, what my other section looks like. I like to keep the formatting consistent. So for nucleic acids, I still have the topics to cover section, and then I have most of my typed information. I did include two drawings that I did on my tablet, but other than that, everything else is just typed on my computer, and I just formatted it using the highlight um, function that you see under basic text. I also added some tags. This one is for important notes that I found under the tag section in the home uh, screen. So in order to better show you some of the features of OneNote, I decided to leave the carbohydrate section blank uh, so I can illustrate some of the useful tools that you can access. So first, um, the topics to cover is something that, as you saw, I like to do. So I want to show you how to add these to-do lists. So under the home tag, or sorry, home tab, you'll see the tags section. And it actually has a variety of different tags that you can use. You can even click customize tags and make your own, either adding a new tag or changing um, the tags that are already there. I mostly like to use this top three, the to-do, important, and question. So let's start with the to-do. All you have to do is click it and then just type out your information. So in this case, I would have to type out um, the topics that I need to cover in this section. So I have carbohydrate function, then I have monosaccharides, polysaccharides, and lastly, I have glycosidic bonds. All right, so these are my topics. So once I actually add the topics and I've added all the information I need, I can simply check the box. So this to-do list function is really useful not only for um, having the topics that you need to cover like I've done here, but also for anything that requires a task list. So for example, if you have assignment due dates, if you have upcoming um, midterms or lab reports that you need to keep track of, or if you have parts of an assignment that you want to break down into individual tasks, again, you just click the tag for to-do list and you can put this anywhere on the screen. The other tags that I mentioned are the important tag and the question tag. So again, all you have to do is click anywhere on the screen and then just click the tag and it will show up. I like to use the important tag for kind of reminders. So if the professor gives a special announcement that I need to be aware of, then I put this important tag as well as any really important content that the instructor has highlighted. I like to highlight as well, just so I know that I have to focus on that when studying. The question tag is more for questions that I have, um, so I can go and um, look for the answers after um, or anything else that is kind of noteworthy that I need to double check after, I uh, use the question tag for. But again, you're really able to customize these tags to um, fit your needs, so you're able to come up with your own system. Now, another really cool um, feature is that you're able to really customize the look of the screen. If you go to the view tab here, you're able to change the page color. I'm going to choose teal, and then you're able to decide whether you want to have lines or not. They have different options for world lines as well as grid lines, so you can make them as big or as small as you would like, and you can even change the color of the lines if you would like. So for example, I can make them uh, pink if I would like. I'm going to go with no lines for now. And lastly, if we go back to the Insert tab, you'll see the rest of the features that you can use on OneNote. So you have options to record, so whether it's audio or video, and this will be integrated in um, your um, actual notebook. So you will record the video, and then once you're done, um, your notes will be kind of synced up to the audio or video that um, you have added. I already showed you how to add um, images, so the screen clippings and the pictures, but you can also add online videos or even links. So if you want to reference something, you can just have it straight in your notes. The part that I really like the most, though, are the files because I find that really useful for studying. If you're taking a course where you use a lot of um, Excel spreadsheets, you can actually add any existing spreadsheets that you have, or you can even create your own. So I'm going to do that right now. 
So you'll see that it will insert a spreadsheet and then you're able to edit it. So it will take you to Excel to edit the spreadsheet, but you'll have everything in your notebook. So everything is um, kind of integrated. In addition to this, you can add any file attachments as well as printouts. I really like the file printout option because I'm able to um, import any PDFs or uh, PowerPoint presentations. So if your professor um, posts lecture notes ahead of time, you're actually able to put them in and you can annotate over them, write over them, or just have them on kind of one side of the screen and then you can just do your um, note taking on the other side. I also like to use my Cornell um, templates for note taking and I can import those again using the file printout. So I've already done that um, here. So I'm just gonna show you what that looks like. So here you see um, the Cornell template, which is available uh, for you on Canvas for download. And I've just simply um, typed over it. So kind of taking some notes um, using this method. And if you need uh, more information on the Cornell method, you can watch the video on that. And then on the right, I just have my lecture slides for the carbohydrate section. So I'm able to um, add both of these using the file printout option. So what I really like to do is have my lecture notes and I can write any important notes here. For example, if the professor says um, that, you know, the midterm has been postponed, then I would write um, that notes. And then I know that this is an important information I need to keep track of. Then I can take my notes using the Cornell method and then what I like to do is use the notes from the Cornell method to create kind of a more comprehensive um, guide or study guide like you see here where I have extra information and drawings. So um, one easy way to do this is to go to the view tab. You can go to new window and then you can actually have both um, of your uh, note or one notes windows and you can have one for the Cornell method, and then you can have one for the carbohydrates. So you can use this information to um, add it to your complete um, study guide for carbohydrates. So that's a really um, nice way of working. Uh, and I like the split screen also, if you're watching online lectures or something like that, you can use this as well. So I'll go back to the full screen. Um, and that's basically a really, um, condensed version of some of the features that are available with OneNote. I hope you found this video useful. Make sure you check out the rest of the note-taking um, guides and modules that we have for you on Canvas. And thank you so much for watching.